The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 9, verses 1 through 13. King David was called a man after God's own heart. He was one of Israel's greatest, most powerful rulers. But long before David became king, he was best friends with King Saul's son, Jonathan. Whatever happens, please be kind to me. I know the Lord will defeat all your enemies someday, but promise to always be kind to me and to all my family. I promise. Though King Saul was jealous of David and many times tried to kill him, he and Jonathan remained close friends until the one day David received very terrible news. The Philistines attacked us. Saul and Jonathan are dead. Even though Saul had been his enemy, David was still deeply saddened. He even wrote a song to help the Israelites grieve the deaths of Saul and Jonathan. Israel's mighty men have fallen. Now that Saul was dead, David could become king just as God had declared many years before. Even so, there were still many long years and long battles before David finally was king over all of Israel. I will honor God by doing what is fair and right for everyone. One day, David remembered the promise he had made to always be kind to Jonathan's family. He called for his officials. Is anyone left from Saul and Jonathan's family? Oh, excellent. We shall locate them, prosecute them, and place them all in jail. No, no. I want to be kind to whoever is left because of Jonathan. Uh, but, but King Saul was your enemy. He tried to kill you. Just find out. So the officials sent for Ziba, a man who had served Saul's family for many years. Are you Ziba? Ziba eyed King David warily and glanced around to see whether this might be some kind of trap. I am ready to serve your majesty. Is anyone from Saul's family still alive? Ziba hesitated. He knew that David had the power to do anything he wanted to members of Saul's family. Well, uh... You can tell me. It's just... Uh... Don't worry. I I'm not looking for payback. God has been very kind to me. I would like to be kind to that person in the same way. Oh, good. A son of Jonathan is still living. Mephibosheth. M what? Mephibosheth. Mef what? Mephibosheth. Mephib what? Mephibosheth. M Mephibosheth. Well done, your majesty. Tell Mephibosheth to come see me. Actually, both of his feet were hurt, so he can't walk. David turned to his officials. Have Jonathan's son brought here. Now Mephibosheth knew perfectly well his grandfather had tried to kill David, even though he probably knew that his father Jonathan was good friends with David. So like Ziba, he probably feared the worst when messengers arrived with a command from the king. Oh, King David wants to see me. Uh, maybe I should just, uh, just send a message, a, a singing telegram or, or a talking mime. As Mephibosheth approached the palace, he stared up at the imposing walls and towers. Oh, okay, I'm here. I've seen it all. We can, we can go now, right? So long, farewell, Our feet is saying goodnight. <laughs> As he was brought before David, Mephibosheth fell down to his knees, bowing low before the king. Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth didn't dare look up. Uh, I'm ready to serve you. Well, you could start by letting me call you something easier. How about Bo? Mephibosheth finally raised his face to see that David was smiling. Don't be afraid. You can be sure that I will be kind to you because of your father, Jonathan. Wow. Uh, thank you. Plus, I'll give you back all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. Oh, well, I gotta say, that's amazing. And I'll always provide what you need. I don't get it. Why are you doing anything for me? I'm about as important as a, a, a dead dog. You're Jonathan's son, and I made him a promise. David called for Ziba to return. Ziba, I'm giving Bo here everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and servants will farm the land for him and take care of him. I'll provide everything he needs. 
I'll do anything you say. Perfect. Now, Bo, do you have any sons? Just one. A little boy named Mika. Excellent. I'll teach him to drive my chariot. From that time on, Mephibosheth and his family came to live in Jerusalem, and David provided everything they needed, just as he had promised Jonathan.